All right, so we're going to talk today about vertex form. And I don't have a note sheet to give you, so um, you'll have to take notes on a separate sheet of paper. Make sure you put it somewhere safe and, or attach it to your Chapter 10 note packet. But today's lesson is going to be about vertex form. And vertex form, before we really talk about it, we need to remember that what we were working with was known as standard form. Standard form, remember, was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And remember all of these questions that we were able to answer and the formula we needed to use, right? x equals the opposite of b over 2a, gave us our axis of symmetry, and then we need to use our axis of symmetry to find our vertex, our c value gave us our y-intercept, and all of those pieces that we had. The cool part is, is that we can find all of those same pieces for a quadratic that's given to us in vertex form. Vertex form looks like this. y equals a times the quantity x plus h squared minus, I'm sorry, plus k. So we're going to subtract this h value and add the k value in the formula. <clears throat> what vertex form gives us is our vertex. So that the first thing we need to write down is that the vertex is a point and it's going to have the coordinate h, k. So whatever our h value is and the y part will be whatever the k value is. So that's my vertex, h, k. Now be cautious, because the formula has a subtraction inside parentheses, when we write this x value of the vertex, we need to take the opposite of what we see. So that if I had given you a problem, y equals, 3 times the quantity x minus 4 squared minus 2. If I had given this to you, this a value is the exact same, right? This a value here and this a value here have the exact same job, they're the exact same number. So we know that this parabola opens up because A is positive. We know that because it's a 3, that it has a vertical stretch. And here's the new part. So we dealt with A. Now we actually can jump right to our vertex. Right to our vertex. We don't have to go through the axis of symmetry first. We can get right to the vertex. So the x value is going to be the opposite of what it looks like it should be. So it looks like it should be a negative 4, means that it's a positive 4 x value. But the k value is exactly what it looks like. So since it looks like it should be negative 2, it is a negative 2. <clears throat> so we have our direction of opening, we have our vertex. Well, if it opens up, doesn't that mean that we have a minimum? And if we have a minimum, what's that minimum value? What's the lowest possible output? Same as what we had before, right? It's the y part of the vertex. So in this case, that value is negative 2. Our 
I skipped it a little bit, but I didn't need to. How about that axis of symmetry? Where is it at? What always matched before? What did we use the axis of symmetry to tell us about the vertex? Now we use the vertex to tell us about the axis of symmetry. X is equal to, huh, that's a pretty big hint, 4. Remember, our axis of symmetry goes through our vertex. So the last thing we have to do is we, have, we aren't going to find C, but we may be asked to find our y-intercept. And remember that a y-intercept is just a point. And this is the one we'll have to do some work to find in this problem. Everything else is kind of given to you. To find that y-intercept, we need to make the x value be 0. So what happens if I plug a 0 in for x in my example? So we're going to get a negative 4 squared, so that's really a 16. So we have 3 times 16, then subtract 2. So 48 minus 2, and that tells me that my y-intercept is at 0, 46. And I found all of my pieces without having to use the other formula. So why don't you go ahead and do the example. y equals 1 half times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 1. Here's your list of pieces that you should use or all the things that I'd like you to identify. So how does it open? Does that tell you it's a maximum or a minimum? And what is that maximum or minimum value? What is your axis of symmetry? What is your vertex? I'm not asking you for C but I do want to know what your y-intercept is. Go ahead and give that problem a try, then come back and check your work. All right, so I hope you're coming back and that you're checking your work, but I kind of stopped in the, in the middle of my problem because I didn't want you to get too far ahead of me for those who forget to push pause. So I think that your A value work is pretty basic. It's what I have here in blue, but now you need to work on your vertex. To find our vertex, we're going to go ahead and use x minus h squared and that k value. In this case, the vertex should be at negative 3 as the x value and the k value of negative 1. And now we can fill in almost all the rest of these problems. Remember that our axis of symmetry is equal to, or is the same as what the x value is equal to, right? It's a line. So x is equal to negative 3. That minimum value is a negative 1. And then to find the y-intercept happens when x value is 0. So we need to plug in a 0. 